So here in this Debaco University video, we're going to be looking at factors to consider when estimating the time of death. And we're going to look at some of the digestive systems, uh, some blood polluting to look at. Um, so these are different factors, while not a complete list, some key factors to consider when estimating the time of death. So first off, the digestive contents. We want to keep in mind that these can help determine the time of death to, by determining how long the person was until they ate, until they died. Uh, so seconds, it only takes seconds for chewed food to pass through the esophagus down to the stomach, four to six hours for the stomach to empty its contents into the small intestine, about 12 hours for the food to leave the small intestine, 24 hours until undigested food is released from the large intestine. And this digestive process usually takes a bit more time than a day, uh, but it can be affected by sickness, liquid intake, fear, and also um, any drugs the person may have consumed. So we want to keep in mind of these potential variables to the times stated here when we're trying to uh, look at the digestive contents of an individual. Now looking at the eyes is another indicator that can be used because the eyes of the victim can also hold answers to the time of death. Uh, there's a thin uh, cloudy film that will develop over the eye within about two to three hours after death has occurred. If the eyes are closed though, this will take about 24 hours for this film to appear. So keep that in mind is how the person was found originally can influence again these times uh, that are stated here. The eyeballs become softer as a result of less fluid pressure behind the eye, and the degree to which this has occurred can be used as a measure of the time since death as well. Keep in mind, I have a couple little chart here, kind of looking at uh, open versus closed and the onset, just to give an approximation for trying to pinpoint within as degrees of accuracy we can to estimate that time of death. We also have skin coloration to take into consideration. So the color of the corpse will help determine the time of death from about 48 hours onwards. So not great at determining under two days, but beyond two days, uh, this has a stronger correlation. From approximately 40 hours after death, bacteria begin to breed in the skin, giving the skin a noticeably green tone. Uh, the tinge will start in the lower stomach area and spread outwards, affecting the hands and feet last. So that can also give an idea of where that progression was found or discovered on the individual. Approximately four to seven days after death, the skin will acquire this marble-like appearance and the veins become closer to the surface, thus becoming more easily visible. So again, skin coloration, another factor to try to estimate that time of death. We also have blood pooling, as we can see here. The pooling of blood uh, can be a vital clue in determining the time of death and is known as hypostasis. This occurs when the blood ceases flowing, settling the lowest parts of the body, and in turn causes the skin to become pink and red in color. Blood will pool at the lowest parts of the body, usually starting between six to eight hours after death has occurred. Analyzing the location of pooling can help indicate the position of the body. Also, if we find that region and we kind of apply some pressure, depending on whether the coloration changes or not or how quick it returns can also help indicate an estimate for time of death. Here in the upper image, we see the blood pooling in the, in the back here. Uh, this uh, person is left in the, what's called the supine position there on their back, and that blood pooling indicates that that is the position they were in when they died. So all these are contributing factors to help pinpoint when the time of death had originally occurred. 